Good morning, gentlemen. Nice to see you. Check it is on. Right, the, actually, one bit of, um, it's not really my news, um, but I think it might as well I'll mention it, as unless you're avid followers of the Rule Forum, um, you won't know about it. But uh, basically, the, um, on the Raspberry Pi, networking, writing over the network has been very, very slow, you know, like one twentieth or one fortieth of the speed of a, of a so you're doing from a Pandabar. But uh, the work has been uh, gone on that, and in actual fact, uh, basically that is, has now been fixed. Um, minor hiccup, I think the last the version is actually in rule, um, the repository where if you download from them, um, it, it introduced some oddity that meant the panda board now started being very slow on networking. But um, as of yesterday, Chris, and I can't, he, he, on the forum he just calls himself Chris, but I don't know which Chris it is. It's not Chris Granson or Chris Hall, or I don't know, it's Chris Granville. So, um, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a Chris, but anyway, we need to uh, thank him because he has now supposedly fixed that. Um, uh, although I think there's still work to be done there because it, I think he now reckons that Panda Board is still, sorry, the Panda Board used to be half the speed of what the Pi now is. I'm sure therefore there will be work, room for work for getting the Panda up to the same speed as the Pi. But um, if you've ever used a Pi over the network, you'll realise that's actually really rather useful and uh, very good. But uh, yes, I saw the uh, the information of that came from some benchmarks that Chris Hall here did overnight, or last night, or posted? Posted last night, but, uh, which is great. But yeah, that's uh, a bit of a, an aside. Um, right, well, CJ and Vordy, we, as you I'm sure know, we try and do all sorts of things. Um, pretty well anything that any Wisconsin Cross user might want. Um, one thing that we do now have, um, and might be of use to some of you, is that um, uh, <coughs> the Panda board can, with the right MDF and the right monitor, do 1920 by 1200, um, and also 2048 by 1152. And we actually have stock um, of monitors that will do that on a Panda board. There's also, you can do the 2048 by 1152 on a larger 27 inch monitor that's actually 2560 by 1440. You can't unfortunately drive it at its highest resolution, but um, uh, we are awaiting stock of those. Unfortunately, there's one that we know definitely will work. Um, someone else has already done that. Um, <coughs> uh, but that one unfortunately is 500 pounds. The, the one that uh, we're hoping to get another one in, which is over 100 pounds cheaper. But at the moment, until actually arrives, it's out of stock the last, the last month, so we haven't been able to check that one out, but we'll be doing that. Um, and we actually have one of the 1920 by 1200 monitors, um, an external one, one that we're using on the stand, which we're offering that one a bit cheaper. Unfortunately, the, apart from the 2560 1440 monitors, the ones that are native at 2048 by 1152 are unfortunately second hand, because they don't actually make them anymore, which is unfortunate, but, uh, but that um, is sort of where we are at. Carrying on on monitors, um, something else that most of you know, but there is, has been some work on connecting up display link, um, uh, using a display link output, which is basically you go take from USB, um, and from USB, you end up outputting VGA or DVI um, to the monitor. And that is um, something, so it's going to be ultimately um, well, working on getting it so that you should be able to have multiple displays. Um, and um, one of them will be USB. It's never going to be fast update. Um, so the, USB nature of it, but if you're just wanting it for sort of logging information um, on an extra screen at your side saying, oh, emails have arrived, or um, a static web page has been updated, or 
the nine year long video web page has been updated. Those links can be useful. Along carrying on with the uh, display um, theme, um, you may be aware that the Raspberry Pi Model B has a thing called a DPI interface. Um, or something other like that, like there was some discussion about what it actually stood for, and no one could actually have, was certain. There's <laughs> a couple of companies have used it, but basically, it's not, it's a sort of a, um, up to eight bits per pixel that come out, um, um, and of which six of the bits per pixel are brought out on the B plus GPIO pins um, and some other control lines. Now, with the right sort of discipline. Um, LCD panel, there are ways and means of connecting it up. I, I forget the right to, type of panel it's talking of. It's not, it's not LVDS, but uh, but the other thing was people have realised that using it and a resistor ladder, you can actually have to generate a VGA. So you can now have VGA output from a Raspberry Pi. Now the quality is not going to be brilliant. Um, but it will do the high resolution, it's just you get some shimmer. We've actually got a, a, demo, a demonstration of it on, on our stand. We've used some breadboard, but so the way it works, there's an awful lot of interference, so you get a lot of shimmer, but on a proper PCB version of it, it should be a lot better, but it's still not going to be nice and rock solid. But again, it's an extra interface to give you some sort of display um, and the boards that will do it, they'll give me sort of like four or five pounds um, to um, for that. And again, um, because of the way the Raspberry Pi works, whilst it's not possible to have uh, one more composite and DV, uh, an HDMI output in operation at the same time, on the Raspberry Pi it is possible to have the uh, HDMI, the DPI, um, and the DSI. The DSI is the one where if you the, the, the panel connectors on the board. Um, now that thing is no one so far has produced anything that goes on that board because it basically requires firmware in the Raspberry Pi and the start.elf file to support it. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation have been working on that and have showed, shown prototypes and it's due um, imminently. I think they originally said third quarter but um, it has slipped, but uh, they're going to do a little pa um, panel, I think it's, a, they look like panel, I was told they're going to do two different sizes, I think the first one's going to be 10 inch, and it will be touch screen as well. Um, now that one, as far as we're concerned in the risk cost world, isn't going to be, at the moment, so useful because, um, actually no, sorry, I'm going to get my track of thought that, yeah. Um, it is possible, we, we don't know yet, that that will actually just work on, on RISCOS without um, any, uh, you having to do anything. The, going back to the DPI, in actual fact, we haven't actually had that working on RISCOS. Um, there's some, some, something oddity that's stopping the display from working, because it does have to set the GPIO pins up in a particular way. Um, and I think that the RISCOS is then going back and effectively changing that to what it expects. Now we've tried running some software from Tank that uh, should allow us to revert back to what uh, um, we think it should be, but that didn't work, but I'm sure that will get sorted out at some time. But basically, ultimately, it should be able to have, uh, risk loss should be able to output concurrently at the same time, be HDMI, DPI, uh, DSI um, and a display link and if you really want to be mad um, some of you may know that someone's done some tiny little one, it one inch um, I think it's about 128 pixels by 100 pixels you get a number of devices that will connect up to I squared C and give you a, a, um, an actual uh, a display so you can be rather small for choices <laughs> especially on, on a Raspberry Pi. Now the display, um, uh, not display port, sorry, it's right. display link for, some, for your USB, that would work, works on Ionix, um, Raspberry Pi, Panda, Beagle board, it's, it's basically over USB, so, what's that? 
might even work on a, on a castle USB card. Um, possibly not, I don't know. Um, right, so that's various display options. Now, of course, the other thing is people are using, often have multiple machines, a lot of risk use that multiple machines and don't necessarily have room for multiple displays at the same time. So um, a lot of people have had in the past just KVMs, but a lot of KVMs, um, well, most KVMs do not support DVI um, or HDMI. Now, we have been supply, be able to get hold of some DVI-based um, KVMs, but they're, they're not cheap. But ones that do HDMI has been, they have been sort of well, well over 100 pounds, even for just a two-port one. We have now got some, they are 79 pounds, but some proper HDMI KVMs. They are the captive cable. Um, the only downside is that we found that they they don't they, they draw their power from uh, the USB and even a B plus um, Raspberry Pi doesn't seem to let it draw enough power um, or a pounder board we've we found so you, you do need to be utilizing a powered USB um, port for your know, powered hub using that USB port um, to connect up uh, those KVMs, but they, they do work. We also do have a, if you don't need HDMI, we do have a more reasonably priced DVI one, and now the interesting thing about this one is it's DVI stroke VGA. So if you've got an old um, Ionix or SBC and you've got a modern um, digital output system, a Panda or a Beagle board, etc. Um, that is the ideal unit for it, and it basically the output from the uh, unit. It doesn't it doesn't do sort of like analog to digital conversion in it. it Your monitor does still need to support both um, DVI and um, VGA, but it it does the necessary routing for you. So we have some of those which are are fairly rare. We found to get a hold of. Um, another thing I think it's been around a while now, but just in case some of you hadn't heard of it, there is now some high quality USB um, audio um, options within RISCOS. Basically there's some relatively cheap I install, about £10 that we do, um, USB audio and they will do digitisation or playback at higher quality than, or significantly higher quality than you get from the standard sound system. Um, and there is also a slightly more professional box about 30 odd pounds, a bait ringer, I think it is, um, that we, we, we were stopping. Um, right, then on to the, the Panda Row. The, the Raspberry Row is, does a, a very good job, um, and where this is, that's where we take a Raspberry Pi and put it in a mini ITX case and give you all your standard peripherals. Um, using our controller board that we put in there to give you soft power and off um, and um, real-time clock and filing system LED um, so we're, so that you know we're doing those for the Raspberry Pi based customers and then obviously if you want a little bit more power a little bit more memory there is the Panda Row um, which is the Panda board system that does uh, a, a very good job um, and is still on a beta version of the operating system, as you know, 521. They're waiting for 522, which will be sort of a, sort of a full release version. Um, that it's, it's taking time to, to get out of, you know, get some of the bugs and whatever sorted, as I understand it. But um, which actually, yes, I, uh, we. We don't actually get involved in, in programming, in developing the actual operating system ourselves. Um, but what we do try, and we, we don't have that expertise, but what we do try and do is help facilitate those people that are, and there are various people that we've you know, given hardware to, loaned hardware to, working on, or you know, we've shipped them actually around the world to um, Switzerland and, Various other com 
countries to um, France and um, even one aspect now Sweden. Um, so we um, do what we can. So, uh, for some of it, we have been actually, it's more the fact of trying to obtain the appropriate uh, data sheets, because some data sheets are needed for some of these parts that uh, um, the OMAP chip that Willy, who has been the prime programmer behind the Pandaboard port, has been working on. Some of those are only available under NDA, and most, most places will not just sort of give those out to private individuals, so we've been able to sign the appropriate things and yet then pass the information on to um, the various key people that are working on that. Unfortunately, we've still actually found out that there are some further documentation which we're finding it rather harder to get hold of. And they don't, uh, they won't even actually talk, asking us about volumes of, of how much, how many million OMAP chips we're going to be buying from them. So, but I think they've sort of maybe have got the idea that we're not a big player. So, unfortunately, some of those things are taking time. But so far, we've been. You know, pretty good at managing to get everything, but there's one extra document that uh, we have found out about that exists. Uh, we've not so far managed to make, but we're, we, we're still working on that, but unfortunately this all takes time. Um, and we've got so many things on the go at the moment, it can be difficult. Um, but the Panda Board, uh, so the Raspberry Row, they, they sort of, in many senses, the, because we've got the same power control module for it, and you know, they are the same case options and that, so the one is just yes, more, more expensive, but more, more memory and more power, and that is sort of certainly the, the best um, system that is available at the moment to buy. Now, we then come on to the Pi Compute module, because um, that allows things to be done a bit differently. Um, the, I'll come on to the uh, laptop a bit later, but Basically, we are still looking at other ways of using the the, 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 the compute module. Um, don't think it's particularly going to be of great interest to the um, risk loss community. Anything spe um, special, but we're, we're looking at opportunities there, uh, mainly to try and help. Um, uh, well, yeah, generate some extra business, some extra profit, which we'll be able to pay out back into keeping um, us going with, with RISCOS um, on, on that, including we're looking at some industrial type uses um, there and trying to get groups of people, small comp uh, companies that need um, units, but not in large enough volume for them to justify but, um, designing a board that has I know, two camera connections on it and Wi-Fi, but pretty well nothing else. Um, uh, that's all they want, um, uh, but we're hoping to get groups of companies that have similar requirements so we can design um, a board that the Pi Compute Module can go into that will then, um, we can then supply it with maybe um, uh, any expensive components that are not in use for one particular customer will just won't be fitted when they're assembled. Um, we, we have a company up in um, in Scotland that has been doing our surface mount assembly work for us. Um, that are very versatile, and we can say, well, of these hundred boards, can can this one have that connector on it, and that chip, and that and that and fifty of the boards have a different configuration um, because it doesn't actually. They, they when they program in the assembly onto the machines, it's uh, relatively straightforward then to do. So, the um, really just one It um, now comes on to the um, to the laptop. I still have another sort of announcement to make after this. Significant, I think. Um, but this is hot off the plane. Part going to be uh, was the prototype of what part of what we need to develop a laptop. And uh, Simon over here, who's been very working very hard over the last few weeks, didn't quite know what he was taking on. 
Um, now, you might say, think that um, connecting a keyboard to a computer would not be a difficult thing. Well, there are hundreds of millions of USB keyboards out there. But partially, we, we want to do, um, we very quickly found that when we started looking at laptop keyboards, because they plug in basically to the motherboard of a laptop, and so the manufacturer knows exactly how it's all organized, and it will have its own onboard controller that, that scans the keyboard and does it. But now we want to connect that up some way to things like a Raspberry Pi, but we didn't want to limit it to just a Raspberry Pi. Um, but the thing is, uh, so you have to go via USB, and you think, oh, I'll just use a chip that's in a, a USB keyboard. But those chips, of course, no one in Europe ever buys those chips. So the manufacturers of those chips don't even have a UK distribu a European distribution. And we very quickly found out that some keyboards are organized as like 16 rows by nine columns, and others are <coughs> 10 columns by 10 rows, and many, many different arrangements. Um, so we realized that you would have to find the right controller for that particular matrix. Um, you would also have uh, to totally remap, but the, well, the likelihood of the matrix map was to match your particular keyboard is pretty remote, so you'd have to do that. You can actually do that to some extent in, in RISCOS through a key mapper. We, we did um, wire one of these, uh, this one, actually, yes, this particular keyboard, which comes out of a particular laptop that we've got, um, that uh, two uh, a controller board that was from a, uh, a standard USB keyboard, and it, uh, um, yeah, the metrics were wrong, but we were able to use KeyMapper to map things around it. That doesn't really work effectively. Now, one of the other things is that we wanted to try and make sure that we weren't limiting ourselves just to one keyboard, um, and I'll come on to that to a bit later. That's another aspect of it. But so. I fairly quickly worked out that we need to um, use something like a microcontroller to actually be the keyboard controller and it could scan everything that's needed. Um, I did get a little bit hung up at one point because I was trying, I know there's lots of problems with keyboards in that um, because you need to allow the options of having multiple keys, you know, shift, control, well shift, control, F12, we all know, um, and things like that. Now, I think I've worked out in my own mind now that part of that problem of making sure that you can get all the key combinations available and reusable um, is partially down to the organization of the matrix. You can't actually choose just to put shift control and function key wherever you want. It has to be very particular, so that's, that's done in the matrix for free. But basically, by using um, a microcontroller and uh, so what's it called the other one? Microchip IO expander. Um, um, yeah, microchip IO expander. Second one because yes, we need to have quite a few. Uh, it's about 27, 28 um, IO pins just for the keyboard aspect of it, um, and um, microcontrollers that have 27 GPIO pins start being large and expensive but by using an expander, then that can be got down. So, um, this has been developed, and, but the thing is, yes, you can, you can work with multiple keyboards, and the microcontroller on there is, well, with some bit of rather nifty software that Simon's written, it can, you plug it in initially, you press a button, and you type, it tells you on screen, because you just load up an editor, and it via the USB instructs you what to do. Um, and so it can learn how the keyboard is all laid out and store that and it's therefore for use. So it's a very, very nifty little thing and it's going to be working on uh, ways of interfacing um, touchpads. Because basically most touchpads, um, certainly in the, in the historically, have been PS2 devices, um, which is relatively straightforward for a microcontroller to input. 
um, and our dues. So it will. Um, one of the other things is yes, I'll, you might think that mice buttons would be a very simple thing to implement, but it's it's well physically is the problem because um, I'll show you here. This is the motherboard out of the laptop that we have decided to base our complete laptop risk cost solution around. So we will be selling a laptop which will just look like a normal laptop, but when you turn it on, it will be risk cost. It'll have a Pi compute module in there. Because we have, we've taken it out, we've taken it up, opened it up, taken this out, replaced it with a number of boards, one of which will have the, the, the keyboard, has a controller on it, one of which will ha um, be dealing with the power supply, um, and um, that board will probably also have on it the uh, HDMI to LVDS for the panel, for the screen panel. And then we have another central board um, that will have the Pi Compute module, the USB hubs, um, SD card uh, connect, uh, interfacing, and um, Ethernet on on the central board. Now, so th this is this is what I want to remove. Now, the touchpad that that goes with that, yep, it has a lead that will have PS2 on it. Um, but the actual um, mice, the switches for the mouse, when I can find it. Yes, these, well, the touchpad sits there, and then the, you've got the two actual buttons, right? Yes, you can press the touchpad to emulate a mouse click, but if you actually want to click it, the, the left button, it actually actuates this micro switch, which is on the motherboard, because now that's a quite common arrangement. So, in actual fact, so we have to somehow physically position a board there with the switches on it, and route the connection back up to 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 the board that Simon's uh, going to be developing to actually get your your switches. Whilst we're doing that, you'd think, oh, of course we would love a middle button. <laughs> Unfortunately, whilst we could do it, there's no no type. Now that the button or sort of or the physical outer button, the top button you press, there's just the two of them, and there's. I've yet to come up with a way of, well, there are ways that people do, I know you use two buttons to emulate mouse, but you've got, you, you've got the, basically the menu key um, on the keyboard, which is fairly close by. So um, if someone can come up with a solution to that, problem doing that, and work on multiple keyboards, uh, laptop keyboards, I'd be very interested, but I, well, they're a better man than I, but, uh, Quite a few of these people involved are, oh, I must admit. So, um, on to, so that's basically going to be the, the, the laptop, the, the basics of it. Now, I yes, didn't actually leave these on the, um, out the front, because I just wanted to, so people then, it's on the front, the front has the basic specification that we're aiming for um, on the, Um, one thing that you may notice I haven't actually included, um, you won't see on the specification, it doesn't actually mention Wi-Fi. We will be we're planning on um, implementing the hardware for Wi-Fi. Um, the thing that's called RISCOS, unfortunately at the moment, doesn't have any software um, for um, support for Wi-Fi. And I thought it'd be a little bit um, disingenuous to to mention it in the specifications when it's not going to work, basically, um, or not in the foreseeable future. But uh, of course, I think we all we all live in hope that there will someone get back into the risk off scene who who really um, fancies all. Oh, means no Wi-Fi still on risk loss. I would like Wi-Fi. 
oh, I just happen to know about Wi-Fi. Oh, I'll wear a driver, but um, well, I think we might be waiting a while for that. But, uh, so the so basically, it's a, as you can see from the specifications, it's a it's a Pi compute module, and so the Pi compute module, the way how it differs from an ordinary Raspberry Pi, and not all of you will realise, is that basically the compute module itself just has the BCM two eight three five, if I remember correctly, on the on the actual card and four megabytes of eMMC memory. There's no SD slot for it, no, well, one USB, um, and, but that's basically what a Pi is before the, the hub chip that's on, on a Model B is um, also added. And on, the B, on the Pi Model B, that also adds Ethernet and we will be adding the appropriate, the same chip, or almost certainly exactly the same chip, on our board for the hub and Ethernet, and another um, hub chip as well, so we're going to need it from the number of USB connections. So, um, now the one thing is, yes, so you can't put an SD card in there directly, it could be connected uh, an SD card, but it would be effectively via USB, so it would be slower. Now, as I expect you, most of you know, the SD card on the Raspberry Pi and the Panda board is the fastest filing system available to, 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 to any of the computer, to either of them. Everything else, because everything else, yes, connects up via USB, whether it be um, networking, that's effectively Ethernet, so that's a USB to Ethernet, um, or um, uh, something like a SATA SSD drive, so that connects up to USB initially. So it will, but the EMMC that is on the uh, compute module, that is a sort of a chip that, it's a flash chip similar to what an SD card, but it's designed um, it, it's a different design, which means it is much more tolerant to uh, you know, um, the rewriting, not uh, the wear levelling problems, le sorry, the wear levelling problems of where sections of the, dry, of the sectors effectively or blocks of memory that have been written to many, many times is now assigned either to, to something that's not regularly written to because Flash does have a limited rewrite life cycle. <coughs> um, EMCC is actually um, faster than even a class 10 SD card. Um, that's nice. One downside is that it is only 4 megabytes. But um, <coughs> risk loss users, well, I tell you, we, we quite regularly get people bringing their systems in for repair or something, and we, we often find that their hard disk, they may have an 80 gigabyte hard disk, but they've got, I don't know, six gigabytes of data on it, if that, and often even less. So, fortunately, risk loss, we're not normally using large amounts of data, um, so you, you keep your things you regularly access on at the moment, on your SD card, whether you're using a Pi system or a Panda-based system, um, and if it ends up being on a Pi compute-based system, you, that will be, you keep that on the, the main drive, which will be the EMC, EMMC drive, to access that. Um, we will, of course, have things like um, real-time clock, battery control. Um, I've got no idea yet what the battery life should be, but it should be very good. Um, we should be able to draw significantly less power than, uh, than, than one of these. Of course, the thing is, things like an SSD drive that we connect up is going to use the same amount of power as an SSD drive when it's used in a, an Intel Windows-based system. Um, and things like the screen, they are obviously using a fixed amount. Although I was quite pleasantly surprised by actually, I looked at the data sheets um, that just the other day of the screen that we're hoping, the panel that's in the unit that we're using, 
and it was quite um, quite reasonable, I thought, the power consumption. Um, so the so it, yes, it, it doesn't look particularly pretty because we've got the everything all in bits, but you can see on the stand the laptop. And it's basically found this this company that will provide us a laptop. We couldn't get them to provide it without um, this, but they would provide it to us without operating system, processor, memory, drives, all the other optional extras. So it, the pricing will be able to be um, quite reasonable, we think. We started doing market research a couple of shows ago and asked people what they think a, a risk cost laptop would be, would cost. Someone said, well, Less than A4. Well, I, think, I think the A4 was 2,499 pounds. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, and, and someone was saying, well, if it was 999, I would still probably buy one. But no, you will um, be very pleased to hear that it's going to be considerably below that. In actual fact, there has someone already just announced um, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I think, called the Pi Top. And that's where they've developed um, actually a complete a case um, with a panel and uh, they've done basically the same design as the uh, effective design as this of a microcontroller to do the keyboard and the uh, tiny touchpad but this one is they design the case and you put a Raspberry Pi um, inside it and around it and they're doing that very, very reasonable price of, well, it's under £300. Um, but this system is certainly going to be more than that, but it will be a much more complete system in a number of ways, ready to, to go. One of the other things is that um, we, we do say on there DVD-RW optional, because one of our thoughts is the fact that um, to try and um, help expand the market for, the, for this, because there are only a limited number of risk cost users wanting laptops. Um, that would be difficult to justify all the expense. So we obviously want to try and sell it into people that are just standard Raspberry Pi users. And of course I thought as well Raspberry Pi users are often they're wanting something like a Raspberry Pi because they want uh, running Linux to be actually connecting up to things. And whilst um, uh, you know how many people need to do that on the move? We, we think there should be some people that would like that. So we we're thinking, how can we bring GPI, some of the GPIO to the outside world um, in a in a laptop case? There's not where do you put it? Really old laptop case? You could say, oh, well, I'll put it where the parallel port was or something. But what we've soon realised was that a lot of people don't actually utilise um, an optical drive. So excuse me. What time? Well, you've got another five minutes. Right, okay, I'll be quick. Right, um, so basically the, our idea is that well, um, not many people use optical dri um, drives an awful lot nowadays, or if they do, they'll have another computer they can put the disk in and over the network um, get, get at the data. So because a CD drive is quite a large a horizontal slot that we could somehow arrange some connector to Give GPIO to the outside world. So to help expand the market, we'll be looking at offering that as an option. And then um, I think that's all I've basically got to say about the laptop. Well, in, in laptop specific, um, you may wonder what the heart is on front of our um, one of the leaflets that we the price lists that we've uh, been giving out. Um, because the other thing is, whilst we've been making these things sort of modular and that like in, if someone has a, uh, a pan, uh, sorry, a Raspberry Row, we could take out the Raspberry Pi part of it and replace that with a Pandaboard system. But not many people, have, well, no one's actually done that yet because I think we've done it initially if they were going to do that because we've not been selling for terribly long. But it would be nice to have some upgradability. And what we've realized is that, in particular, with the laptop, we will have a lot of the work um, that we're having to do is right in the peripheral side of this, the keyboard, the screen, the battery, um, etc. But the central unit, 
um, it would be quite possible to replace that central unit with something else. And of course, the central unit could be, of course, it, its heart. So we're going to be referring to the central part as the heart, and we will be, as and when um, later systems come available, we will be offering heart transplants, of course. <laughs> and, um, oh yes, yes I, I've been looking at all the sorts of the nice sort of phrases we could use that, of course, we really shouldn't call them cases anymore, we should call them bodies, because a heart goes in a body. Um, and, and, and as Andrew will probably end up doing most of the work of actually fitting them, he's going to be, of course, the chief heart surgeon. Um, any more jokes like that? Would be yes. Um, so, it's, but we realise it's, um, yes, the future and hearts for the future. Um, the, many of you will know that um, Willie, who's done most of the animal work, has been working on later OMAP 5432, I think it's called, um, based systems. Um, and in actual fact, I can, uh, he, he, well, he didn't say it was confidential, but uh, I, in, in, he has managed this week to now make a significant step, and he's now got a proper display. He uh, previously hadn't got a display, but he's now got the HDMI giving a display. So he's got USB working, he's got Ethernet working at the same time of sorting out the Ethernet. He's now able to upgrade the number of controllers that, that, that is support, the driver's support for that. And that will be being fed back to Rule um, sometime soon. Um, and um, so with the, now the advantage of these these later systems, the OMAP 5 based systems, are primarily <coughs> the real advantage is the fact that it has onboard SATA, so you'll be able to get faster disk access. Having said that, of course, RISCOS very rarely uses them, the, the drive, so it's not actually going to make, I think for RISCOS, for most users, it's not actually going to make a lot of difference, but it's a lot of people miss um, the drive. The, the, the filing system is a bit slow because yes, it can be slower than, you know, like an online. <coughs> but basically, so we're going to we hope to therefore doing some hearts that will fit into Panda Rose and Raspberry Rose. So we will with later systems um, and quite where that's going to carry on. How much sort of after the OMAP five or. Uh, uh, five systems, then, well, presumably there's going to be know, OMAC six systems or other um, uh, RISCOS uh, system on a chip based units. <coughs> there are ports for. So there's very interesting times we're now living in for RISCOS, lots of options and uh, things happening, which is, is great. Um, unfortunately, I think one of the limitations at the moment is. The, tie, the manpower at Rural. Um, I know that they, uh, they, they've had a lot of, quite a lot of so, so, um, source code submitted to them that they haven't been able to yet uh, publicly make available because it takes time to do all the necessary administration and the testing and the basic running of Rural. <coughs> so, I was a little bit disappointed at my idea of a bounty for a um, facilitator didn't, didn't quite. Um, I'm, I'm overrunning, so do come in, Matthew. Okay. Um, so, you've got a few minutes on. Yeah, no, no. So, um, uh, yeah, if the, the, any assistance to be given to rule, I think the sort of critical part at the moment is sort of, well, that one well, the bottom moment to some extent, is the manpower that they have available to themselves. They, they've tried, as I understand it, um, getting in help from the from other people to do as, uh, as much as possible, but there's certain key core things which unfortunately they need to end up doing. So my idea was that to of a, of a facilitate a bounty to actually pay one of them so it's not just in their spare time, because it's great all the work that they're doing in their spare time, but that is obviously limited. So um, I don't know if they've had any further thoughts on that. But uh, anyway, well, thank you very much. And sorry, yes, any questions? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sort of like overrunning. So, um, anyone got any questions about hearts or anything? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you very much. Thank you.